Good morning, and welcome to worship. It's good to have you here today. Oh, just a little. Okay. Uh, lots of things happening. We are beginning It's God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, and we're coordinating that with our Rally Day Sunday School events. Um, thanks to all those who contributed to uh, the um, supplies for the kits. They'll be assembled today, the school kits, as well as um, our uh, quilters who help do the prep for the um, winter hats that will be fleece hats, stocking hats that will be tied together, and then some outdoor work of uh, picking up the grounds at Christ the King in King Park and maybe pulling a few weeds here and there. So thanks to all those who are uh, helping with that. And then our flowers today are given in uh, by the uh, Frank family in celebration of Gina's baptism. And so, uh, and, and now she's at confirmation or the eighth grade confirmation. So at this time, um, we will install our Sunday school teachers. So those teachers who are here, uh, I invite you um, to come forward and let me get that. Okay, we have teaching this year, Laura Bohr, Becky Rothfuss, Liz Kendall, Spencer Howard, Deb Heath, and uh, Kenza Nelson, and Sarah Bankston. So if you could come forward. I'll let you guys have center stage. <laughs> All right. It's so funny, and this, this has happened at least one other time, but I always think it's kind of funny of how the word uh, in our lectionary series falls. Today we will be reading from James, and you just kind of have to laugh because James 3, starting at verse 1, says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes, Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. But if, if we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes a strong wind to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever uh, wherever the will of the pilot directs, so also with the tongue, a small member, yet it boasts great exploits. So for you, we're glad that you are willing to be teachers, but the, James reminds us how important it is, the teaching of our children and our youth. And so we are very grateful that you are stepping forward uh, for this grand task. And it is the reason why we install you today and commission you for this. Uh, so let us begin, brothers and sisters. You volunteered your time, your energy, and your gifts to the children, youth, and family ministries of our congregation. Will you offer your giftedness to this ministry in confidence that it comes from God? If so, respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you carry out this ministry centered in Christ's calling, striving to trust God as you guide and inspire? If so, respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you trust in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and honor the gospel with a faithful life? If so, respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. I invite the congregation to stand. Now I ask you, people of Christ the King Lutheran Church, will you today renew your commitment to our youngest brothers and sisters, our children and youth, who look to you for guidance, support, and examples of righteous living? If so, respond, we will, and we ask God to help us. 
people of Christ the King, will you claim these gifted people as those who are called by God to help them carry out our congregation's ministry to children, youth, and families? Will you support them and enthusiastically celebrate the work they do? If so, respond, we will, and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for these leaders and the young people they serve, celebrating our children and youth as the ones Jesus blessed and welcomed? If so, respond, we will, and we ask God to help us. And we hear these words from our psalm for today, Psalm 19, that concludes with these words. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us pray. Gracious God, for Jesus' sake, empower these ministers to care for the young ones in our family of faith. Help them to teach faithfully, lead patiently, and guide confidently. Stir up in these servants the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forevermore. Amen. Almighty God, who has given you the gifts the gift and the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Amen. On behalf of Christ the King, we now have commissioned you for ministry with our youth and children. We are grateful for the gifts you offer and your willingness to serve. And you may be returned to your seat. And our worship continues with our order of confession and forgiveness found on page two in your, in your worship bulletin. And you can stand again if you are able. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our light and truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. to give you praise for the strength to live your word let us pray to the Lord help save and defend us O God God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. verses, wisdom is personified as a woman who invites all who will listen to follow her. Through wisdom offers her hand to those who scoff at her. They spurn all such counsel. That they come to ruin is predictable. Those who find wisdom, however, find life. The first reading this morning is taken from the, sec the first uh, chapter of Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? 
Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you because I have called and you have refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without the dreaded disaster. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 19 and we'll read it responsibly. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened. In keeping them, there is a great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dom domination over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent in it of a great offense. This text uses various images to illustrate how damaging and hurtful the way we speak to and about others can be. Not only are we to control our speech, but what we say and how we say it are to reflect our faith. The second reading this morning is from the first, third chapter of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with great strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Any who make no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder whenever, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world, world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast or bird, a reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth came, come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? 
Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the giver and sustainer of our faith, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, and wisdom knows better than to put that tomato in a fruit salad. You know, all this thinking about wisdom has very much expanded my knowledge base of what makes a fruit it all depends on which part of the plant it comes from. A fruit develops from the flower of a plant. So peppers, squash, and pumpkins are also fruits. Here when I thought I was eating my vegetables, I was really having a fruit salad. Over all these weeks, we've taken this journey with wisdom and we've arrived at Proverbs. Proverbs, those short pithy statements that we encountered last week that communicate a lot and are part of wisdom literature. Remember how this all started with Solomon, how he fears the Lord as he approaches leadership. He gives great quantities of sacrifice. And then in a dream, when asked by God, what do you want? Solomon says, wisdom, wisdom. And it is given 
And remember that first example that this dream is being fulfilled, is coming true, is that judgment between two mothers, two mothers claiming one baby. And wisdom looks strange here as King Solomon wants to cut a baby in half so that each mother can have half a child. Wisdom sorts through the mess of human grief and loss by introducing another situation of grief and loss to determine which mother is the mother of the surviving child when both mothers, the grieving and the not grieving, lay claim to one living child. The real mother is teased out in this dilemma as she is willing to surrender her baby, not willing to sacrifice her child. Better to have a child alive and sacrifice her mothering of that child. And the other mother, the grief-stricken, out-of-her-mind mother, is willing to sacrifice the living child. Wisdom navigates the grief to get at the truth. We encountered wisdom with the song of songs, with the longing and the needing and the desire. And now we have our second encounter with Proverbs, and we meet the wise woman in chapter 1. And this wise woman meets us in public, not in the church, not in the temple, not in the synagogue, but at the city gates, the place where justice is handed out, the place where old men sit around and the future of property and relationships are forged or severed, the place where the problems of the world are solved or at least hotly debated and discussed. This is where we find the wise woman And she's not meek or timid. This wise woman is loud. And she speaks in public. She is a teacher and a preacher. And she speaks in the busiest of places, the political places, the places of judgment and legal systems. Woman wisdom comes to the public. And who listens? Does the public pay attention to what she has to say? Think about this. In Old Testament times, a woman preaching or teaching in public on a street corner is doubly strange. We don't even listen to street preachers these days. Who of the ones I've ever encountered were usually men, not women. This book of Proverbs is doubling down and asks us to pay close attention. This book of Proverbs, where the teacher, the father, uses female personification to hold the attention of young boys in order to teach them the right path over the wrong path. This teaching method of simplifying in extreme opposites in order to tease out the truth was aimed at male youth to get and hold their attention, to teach them how to live in this world. And woman wisdom meets them in public. This wise woman comes out for all to hear the wisdom that is for everyone, the wisdom that is interwoven into the very fabric of the universe. It's out in the open for all to hear. Everyone can, but not everyone will. Think about our public sphere. Is the public listening to the wise woman? Does our our public tap 
into the fabric of the wisdom of God that is given to everyone? Is the public listening to the crescendo, simple ones, scoffers, and fools? Does our public hate knowledge? Does our public ignore counsel? Think about our public's ability to listen to the wise woman that calls to everyone. Does the public listen to the cry of the, the woman wise? The public heard about racism with George Floyd. And did the public listen to the mental health and the drug addiction? Was it only an act of racism? Does the public listen to the cry of the woman wise, is a vaccine mandate the only way to respond to this virus? Would the public response be different if we substituted Biden's name with Trump's name? Would the public think differently about mandated vaccines or masks? What does the public Think about taking away someone's livelihood for a vaccine, for public health. This is public. This is the city gates these days. What is woman wisdom saying in public these days? Is the public listening. What is the public conversation around the 20th anniversary of 9-11? That name given to the, to the day where the four planes and all their passengers were used by terrorists as weapons to fly into the World Trade Center's Twin Towers in New York City, the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and the fourth taken over by passengers to crash in Pennsylvania. Is the public listening to woman wisdom as they reflect 20 years later? The public tries to make sense of what it means for the United States leaving Afghanistan and how the events of 9-11 got us there and what we did and what we lost and what we gained and why we leave that nation. This is the public sphere, the gates of the city of our world. This is where woman wisdom cries out, longing to be heard and heeded. Does the public hear the cries of woman wisdom that are woven into the fabric of the universe, available to everyone? How will the public respond? Will the public hate knowledge, refuse to listen, reject the outstretched hand of woman wisdom? Will they choose the fear of the Lord? Woman wisdom's posture speaks to the severity of the situation. It is a matter of life and death not listening, not acting upon the wisdom that is available. There is a statue of limitations on such important matters. The public reaps what it sows. Failure to act upon what we know has serious consequences. Woman wisdom's posture responds to the foolishness of the fools. She is not hoping that they will fail so she can laugh. It is their failure to listen in the first place. The improper behavior in question is not woman wisdom's laughter or mockery, but the audience's foolishness. Hating knowledge 
is rejecting the fear of the Lord. This is the public life that Christians, the ones who follow Jesus, navigate, knowing that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We listen to woman wisdom and know that God is God and we are not. We know how dangerous this public realm can be for Christians. We know that Jesus asks us to act on what we know of him and to not be ashamed to pick up the cross, that public instrument of death and disgrace, and follow him. We know that this is not simply about the acquisition of wisdom in order to assure success or wealth or hedge against disaster. This is about acting on what we know. This is about God and God's kingdom work and working with God and God's creation and all that God takes delight in. Participating in what God is up to in creation and making choices with wisdom that begins with the fear of the Lord. That fear that is about honor and respect that comes and overflows from knowing that God loves us, saves us, delights in us. God is a God for all people. God loves us. God loves the world. God is present in the courtrooms, in the police stations, in the jails, and the public schools, in the coffee shops, and the airports, all places that people pass through. The gospel is directed to us. The ones who believe that God acts like the mother who is willing to sacrifice mothering her own child so that the child will live. That is the wise love of God that finds a way through difficult times of discernment and even death itself. Jesus says, I will suffer and die for you and for the world. And that, too, is what his followers will do. We give up our life as a sacrifice for others because we follow Jesus. And his love is wise beyond all measure. Amen.
join me now as we confess and proclaim our faith as in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church. That is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you dwell among all who experience hardship and the depths of distress. Twenty years on, there are still so many loose threads and upended lives on the count of the terror attacks of 9-11. Empower people of goodwill everywhere to be weavers of our collective life and uplifters of the downtrodden. Relieve every heart that rages and mourns and will not be settled. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Forming God, you gather this community together, shape our communal life, that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. We pray for your presence of grace and healing to be with the families of Carol Larson and Harold Sorensen as they grieve, and for Mary Lou Q and Phil Lang. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Please stand if you are able. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and merciful God, God, everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which has sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. And now we pray your Holy Spirit that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come. The table is ready.
You may be seated, and those who are choosing to receive communion with the pre-filled cups, go ahead and uh, remove the seal for the wafer part, and when you have that, uh, please hold that up. <clears throat> this is the body of Christ given for you. And then remove the seal from the grape juice or wine, uh, enough so that you can drink from the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
stand for the table blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blessing you have received at his table strengthen you to live in his grace, love, and forgiveness. Amen. Oh. God, for the blessings of this table, may our lives be made new by these gifts of grace, and may your love be made known through us. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
dwells in you.